we're gonna play a game called what the hell is this thing found on the boat hey, well, some kind of seat that you use for painting well it looks to me like those cutouts are for putting paint cans in on an angle but it's weird because it has a jammer bolted to it so clearly that's for a rope maybe we throw it away I just, I don't know what it is. Previously on Sailing Nine Lives, we turned our attention to the bottom of the boat, removing layers of old barrier coat, and then repainted her with two layers of bottom paint. A hull crack was dealt with by removing a through hull transducer and then sealing the hole with a new fiberglass patch. Time for you to go, skimmer. When we bought the boat, mm. it was a U.S. Coast Guard documented vessel. Ghost of skimmer remains. So it didn't need to display a registration number on the bows. But it did need to be properly identified with its documented name and hailing port. In this case, skimmer from Washington, North Carolina. We officially took ownership before making the trip north to New York, changing the name and hailing port in our new documentation. But we didn't update yet what was displayed on the hulls. Definitely a misstep. With the boat out of the water for a repaint, it was time to set things straight. The real plan here is not to paint everything white above the rub rails. I'll do that next year, I think. I really just want to prepare the areas where I need to apply the name of the boat and the hailing port. So I'll prepare those, prime them, paint them a nice coat of white, uh, and then I'll be ready to apply the decals. Trying to figure out the best way to arrange these boat name and hailing port stickers. There's one option. I'm trying to work around the control harness for the engine. Or this. Other thought was something like this. The letters are spread out a little bit more like in the logo where it says nine lives. The spread isn't quite the same, but it's close. And then here it would just say Cornwall and Y instead of the full New York. Okay, for the hailing port and the names, I've determined that I want each to cover a width of 37 inches. So that was easy enough with the Cornwall space NY for New York. And then the nine lives ended up with three and three quarters inches spaces between the letters in the word lives. And a little bit more than that between the nine and the L, which I think works out pretty well. So I think just to join these all together. Right, this is joined together with blue tape. It's fine. Uh, scrap pieces of backer. I think I'm just going to tape them all together like this. I don't know. Maybe not. What do you think about that? So, I remove it from the board now. There we go. So when I apply it to the boat, I can just remove the backing pieces here. That should do it. I've got them temporarily taped in place and I've got reference marks all over the place so I know where to lay it. And I have a bottle here with water and a bit of alcohol. All right, I'm just gonna go crazy here. Pull the back off. Okay. A little bit more alcohol water in here. Sometimes with vinyl lettering you use water and uh, a little bit of dish soap. I don't know. These guys said use alcohol, so that's what I'm doing. And it 
does indeed help me slide it around, so that's good. Looks about right. Approximately. Right. I'm going to start spreading this flat. using a spreader as a squeegee. You can use a credit card, you can use an actual squeegee. I don't care what you use. What do you want? This backing paper is supposed to come right off. Look at that. Looks like crap. Remember that train I told you about? Here it comes. scraper slash squeegee I'm trying to get the water out from underneath so the sticker sticks really well. It did its job in letting me reposition but boy is it making it tough to finish this process. Just uh, fiberglassed a hole in the hull this afternoon. Hole in the hull. And I took a transducer out that was uh, had a big crack running up to it. Okay. And uh, I decided I didn't want to try to just make it work. I don't need the transducer. What is that? <laughs> so it's been a busy day. See you, Bob. Be good. Thanks, bud. Name and a hailing port. 
I'm just looking at you, baby. I'm gross. What are you doing? Cleaning the boat. Does it need it? Yeah. Oh. Super gross. <laughs> with the head because I want to put vinegar in it but then I'm supposed to flush the line yeah I don't really know if it's smart to do that flush the line yeah to where I guess in the holding tank but yeah flush it into the holding tank then what if it sits there so what is it hooked up a holding tank like is it on the right um yeah setting yeah vinegar huh Alright. You know what though? What? That marine head and holding tank are not long for this world. I know. I can't wait to change it. It's really bad in there. We're going to play a game called What the Hell is This Thing Found on the Boat? Okay, well, this you probably know what it is. That I know what it is. That goes behind the steering helm. And it's just a panel. So you could put that aside because I need that. Next. I know some of these mystery things and I can't tell you what they are because I don't know. I think this is some kind of seat that you use for painting. Well, it looks to me like those cutouts are for putting paint cans in on an angle. But it's weird because it has a jammer bolted to it. So clearly that's for a rope. And then we throw it away? I just, I don't know what it is. My other thought was maybe that is for climbing the mast and you put your feet in the holes and you slide the jammer up the rope, right? And you just go a little by little. You kind of inch your way up. Rink, rink, rink. I will, I'll put it under one of the cabins. And then the mystery table. All right. Show it to everybody. Look. Very nice. It's got a little edge. It's got a nice finished top. And then the bottom, you got to hold that up now. Bottom has a cylinder made of wood epoxied to it. Now I thought at one time, and I actually I'm not sure if I ever tried it, I think I did, that that post fits in the aluminum base for the captain's chair, and then you use it as a dinner table. But I don't think it fits. I don't think that's what it's for. Yeah, I know. I don't think you that's need what it's for. at least two things to rest it on. Well, no, because it would just sit in the post and then you just kind of... It would be a very strong table. I, I know. So Beyond that, I having... don't know what it's for. Oh. <laughs> mm -hmm. All right. Throw it out. Okay, so this weird table, guess what? I was right. Look at this. Kind of fits in there. There we go. Look at that. And then, I guess the idea was just swing it out like that. It's not the most stable table. <laughs> stable table. But then you could sit over here and access the table, and I guess you could sit back here. Mostly as an accent, we decided to add a bit more vinyl. We put a half inch black stripe between our boot stripe and the bottom paint, and a quarter inch silver stripe between the white paint and the blue paint. Necessary? Nope. Okay, so even though this boat is documented with the US Coast Guard, I still need a registration sticker with the state of New York, which basically just means that I paid the sales tax. These need to be applied in approximately the same place they would go if I were actually putting registration numbers on the boat uh, along with the sticker. So I'm gonna put it here, which will also serve in my case as a marker to show me where the bulkhead is. So that's one of my blocking points. There we go. And I'll put one on each side. There you go, New York. 
All right, well, we're getting really close to shipping off for our shakedown cruise, and we realized we've never actually inflated our dinghy. And we're gonna need it. So, we're gonna try that out. The Avon Redcrest. This thing's as old as the boat is, from 1984. Let's take it out, see what we got. Well, it's got some things that are kind of ripped, but doesn't seem to be leaking. Not yet, anyway. I'd say not bad for a 35-year-old boat. So funny, if you look at the white paint, this used to at one point say Tender 2, and the end looks like it goes backwards. Tender 2, and then white paint again. Skimmer, which we you know the boat was named. But also, look at this. That used to say chick. Yeah, chick. And on this side, babe. Nice. Speaking of chicks, speaking of babes. Ow! Here goes my chick. In my Woo! The weird thing is this uh, centerpiece, which by the way is hard to inflate because it doesn't seem to have a one-way valve in there. So as soon as you take the inflator out, it somewhat deflates. But anyway, it's got these four little straps uh, on the bottom, I guess. Right? And those are how you secure it inside the boat. Only one of them has this wooden toggle stuck in there, which seems to be the intended way, I think, of attaching it to these four loops here. It's kind of somehow wrap the wooden toggle in there and it stays in place. Um, since we don't have wooden toggles for it, I think I'll probably just run a rope through there, and call it a day. All right, so we got this weird tender has a wooden floor that is a little odd. Well, there you have it. That is the Avon Redcrest. An oldie but a goodie. We're set up for rowing this bad boy around. This, by the way, is a mount for an outboard. We do have a small outboard, but I didn't register this boat. I legally can't use the outboard, so I may have to do that. It's just a two and a half horsepower Yamaha, but uh, should work pretty well. This is clearly not the original engine bracket. This is one that somebody put together to fit. So that's cool. Babe chick, tender to skimmer. Cool. Okay, enough messing up. There's still a ton of project work yet to be done on this boat, but it is time we put nine lives back in the water. Guess that paint wasn't totally dry. <laughs> we have enough done at this point to make the boat seaworthy again. And so we're relaunching and setting off in the evening with the dogs for a shakedown cruise. That's 
Hope she doesn't sink. Uh, I don't see any water coming through there. This is shiny, but I think that's just resin. Yep, we're good. We're good here too. Back in the water. Well, we are floating in our slip. Motor ran good. Uh, I think we're heading out in a few hours. Coming up on Sailing Nine Lives. Pirate and Jack come aboard. My little first mate. And we set off down the Hudson River for a few days out on the water. That's Manhattan, baby. Never gets old, Dubby. Row, row, row you boat. So long, Nine Lives. Hopefully we return to you. That's on stream. Set your spray bottle to spray. Or if you're a nerd, set your phaser to stun. Nerd. <laughs>